Okay, now both teams are sat now before they spawn in, or well, they were sat before they spawn in, planning their maneuvers. We saw some pings going down in the meantime while first players started to have a look at what they're trying to do. Right, we are now into the second round of the finals of the Team Duel Tournament by ExodusEsports.com. We're currently at 1-0 up to Burnt Custard and Andreas G versus Pyman and Alpha, who have everything to play for. If they lose this game, they are out of the tournament and they, they uh, give over the prize money of $150. I am the wrong cat and we also have WP Marshall here with us. Hello folks, yes indeed, and um, <laughs> representing Pi of the People team, we have the two orange players aforementionedly named, Pi Man and Alpha, spawning on the North Pole with double bots first, going air and then further bots. Meanwhile on the South Pole we have those currently at an advantage in terms of the game scoring is concerned, Custard and Andreas G representing Pizza Money, <laughs> going... Double bots, vehicles, and air, following up with significant air. What do you think about that, Ronka? I reckon it's just occurred to me why they've chosen that particular name for their team. And yes, I also that is why I chuckle. Strongly, <laughs> I strongly suspect I know what they're going to do with this prize money if they get hold of it. Yes. <laughs> and I kind of want to go and pay Burnt Custard a little visit, perhaps, if that is the case. Um, Scrounge the pizza. Strategies, I'm seeing lots of air factories from purple, and I am seeing not as many air factories from Orange. Now, it should be noted, as has already been discussed in the pre-game chat, Andreas G is, in fact, the creator of the G system. So he is what I would call an expert on uh, strategies which ought to be used on this planet. Now, the fact that the Purple team has opted for so many air factories, to me, is quite a significant development indeed. Yes, and I think the reason they have done that is because, well... It's heavy choke point based and the expansions are kind of, they're spread out. And with the mobility of air, they will afford much better raiding than docks can ever hope to do. And with the air raiding the expansions, locking orange into their spawn effectively, that's where the ground offensive of purple will be able to say, okay, so you're locked in there, we're going to push you even further back and squeeze you further and deny you your expansions while denying you attempt of expansion and thereafter just roll further and further and further forward. But you pinged the two Vs! I have indeed just pinged. As we saw in the last game, we see some docks coming through, raiding, taking out the early expansion before they can build any defences. Two fabricators lost very early on in the game. Yeah, that's a really big three, win. Three metal points conceded by Orange. These two often see very, very heavy fighting, lots of trading. Those docks need to hurry up and kill off those mechs before they get caught up by the defending force. I don't think actually they're going to succeed in destroying uh, no, the they're third not. metal oh. point. They're going to be chased off. Yeah, they're not quite going to manage it there. But denying two fabricators and the fortification of that expansion is a very big win for this point in the game. Looking around the back, we see further docks possibly going to raid further attempted expansions. They will be able to get at this one. There was a ping from Orange saying, right, we've noticed you. Let's send some defences over there. Have they got a bomber ready to go and deal with it? They have one bomber. Is he going to go over there now? We'll have to see. He goes in the opposite direction. No. Oh dear, but the point defence did get up in time. So it is defended for the time being. In the meantime, we can see a few raiding forces from Orange on the opposite side of the map. Just checking out, seeing where Purple is. Um, and likewise, Purple, just little squads of docks just wandering around the map, keeping an eye on all of the little green dots around the perimeter and making sure that their opponent isn't expanding, but not necessarily taking the time to expand it themselves. Often not worth the investment that's early in the game because putting your fabricators so far on the front line is a risk and putting that much metal on the line for very little reward early on in the game is often not seen to be a worthwhile use of money. Mm. In fact, we just saw here uh, a fabricator and a, an accompanying force of docks were taken out by an opposing force of orange docks which were just sat there waiting for purple to turn up in the first place. So they were actually able to defend that without putting any mechs down on themselves. Mm, what we actually, we've been sort of seeing raiding and counter raiding and bumblebees from orange picking off expanding fabricators from purple, but purple picking off expanding fabricators from orange. So right now, it's sort of tit for tat, but having said that, the economy, the metal from purple is, you know, in the lead there. And actually, 2-2 two, two air! That? I just That's a phoenix! That. What? What is this? It's T2 air rush! <laughs> what? Well, I mean... 
I Actually, didn't see that coming. Move. There's enough. Again, once more, there is enough metal. There are enough metal spawn, oh metal goodness. points near the spawn that they've just pulled out a tier two air fabricator and started plonking that down on the metal points near the spawn. <laughs> I'm just looking in chat as we see that tier two air and see people catching up with it. Kiwi, there, just like you. What? <laughs> He is as amazed as we are, as I'm sure many other people are, but the T2 vehicle's going up in the orange base to count, to answer this. But, oh my goodness, what strategies are they Tier thinking of doing? Tier 2 in five minutes into the game. And That's... it's scouted, blimey. They've found it, they know what they're up to, but there's not a lot they can do about it, because right now, <laughs> they've got complete air dominance. And they will continue to have that as long as they keep building these Tier 2 fighters. Uh, and uh, on a map which is so heavily reliant on air, Having that as priority is really going to make it difficult for Orange. I do suspect that we will start to see some storms coming out in a very short order, though, however. Yeah, storms possibly. Um, I'm almost tempted to think we might... I, I wonder, Worm Rush maybe? But it looks as though they're going for Kestrels, but I'm just, you know, thought experiment. Worm Rush, what do you think to a Worm Rush? I don't think worms are something which can be rushed unless the opponent hasn't scouted your tier 2 air. They mm. are the sort of things which only really work as a surprise. Yeah. I think if your opponent knows they're coming, all they'll do, build some storms, build a load of fighters and do what they can to see you off. The thing is, the storms don't oh, have... Oh wow, yeah. storm, there's a storm, there's a yeah. storm. It, the thing with storms is they don't have a huge fire rate and worms have a large amount of health and... That's the thing with worms, they sort of try and break the uh, break the turtle, as it were. More pings going off there. The T2 air thinking, okay, well, let's just go around and raid stuff, because we can. Kestrel's getting taken down by docks, though. Not great. Not great. But still managing to mop up these forces that are sort of around the map, and with the mobility of the Kestrels, they are just super... Do you remember when the Kestrels first came in, and you could spam about 10 or 20 of them and snipe a commander because they just moved so damn fast? Yes, absolutely. I expect that they're hoping that the same is going to continue to happen. And these docks, just absolutely nothing they can do about this. The Kestrels just sort of appear, docks are dead, move on. And that's completely shut down any attempt that Orange can make by raiding the docks. Because any time they see docks anywhere, all that happens is Kestrels just fly overhead. Bye, guys. Nice knowing you. Have a nice day. Mm. And metal for metal, they are really putting in work. Yeah, and likewise, there's enough just, AA yeah. sweeping through the bombers. I mean, Orange are doing well here. They're playing aggressively. They're sending in lots and lots of aggressive raiding forces, but they're just getting absolutely demolished. There's nothing they can do. Mm. I'm just worried at the long longevity of purple strategy right now because they aren't making too many ground units and Orange's ground forces over here is actually looking quite threatening. And they have got, as long as they keep those storms in the mix, they can really deter the purple air from getting any there's just there are so many air factories right now, including the tier two one as well. Um, mm. I I wonder if they can win by sheer numbers. I'm Air units sure. are expensive, don't forget, but look at the economies as well. Uh, purple have got about 100 in the lead already. So they are producing lots of units. Oh, the storm! storm. Oh, oh, no! They cannot the do anything because made. the storm is there. All it takes is one, and that completely shuts down the air presence. I think they're realizing that. And there's a leveler in there as well That's as a backbone. Good. That's, yeah. I mean, how to deny air and Kestrel spam? Pfft. Let's build a worm, folks. <laughs> I think a worm at this point would actually be a very viable prospect. They've got the economy <laughs> for it. Yeah. And actually, Orange is beginning to catch up in the economy game. They've got their T2 going up in their base. They've got a commander assisting it out as well. And they've got the T2 vehicles. And looking in the army tab there, the factory counts 17 to 26, but most of the 26 are air. That said, the commander is sat there pumping out row after row of vehicle mm. and now uh, bot factories to yeah. add some more I think they realised... Yeah. The tier two. I think you've already pointed this out, the tier 2 vehicle factory going up to support as well. Um, they are just increasing their, their diversity. That after having seen what the storms can do to even what they thought was quite a significant air advantage, I think they're switching up a little bit thinking, alright guys, this isn't quite going to win us the game. It's good for a nice early advantage, which they've easily taken. It's a hefty now... investment for an early advantage. I mean, you know, T2 air, it's not something you just say, eh, let's go T2 air. But storms aren't cheap. Storms, storms aren't storms... cheap, but T2 vehicles tend to have a greater sort of... L 
use long term. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, what you can do, though, of course, is with the build power available in tier 2 air fabricators, is you can go and very quickly plonk down a firebase pretty much wherever you mm. like. So that's one potential avenue open to them. I'd like to see some worms playing. At the moment, though... We have angels um, coming out, blimey. There's a thing happening over here. Yes, and this is the thing that I was talking about with the vehicles and having uh, slightly more viability than air. They are more flexible, and with the vehicles that you can see there... That air is going to go. It is. I'd be surprised if it lives. It's going to live. I'm going to be surprised. Uh, the docks, though. It's going to live. The Kestrel's coming in. The storms are gone. That's oh, it. Once, once that storm is gone, that's it. Over it goes. Down and go the levelers. That's what it, all, all that purple need are enough forces on the ground to be able to. I mean, like things like uh, shellers uh, to take out the AA before, and then once the AA is gone, send in the the planes to finish the job. That's definitely mm. a strategy that's available to them. Blimey, so many pings going off from both teams there. Orange saying, "Hey, look, there's a few vehicles pushing in here. There's a number of bombers pushing oh, over there." And, oh, hello. Undefended metal extractors. Yes, please. Yeah, oh, no, no, right. What are they going for? Energy or metal? Oh, they got the they're fabricator. Going, yeah, they got the fabricator. They saw the storm. They didn't want to outstay their welcome, and they're now going to go for the mechs. Very nice indeed. That's going back into the very economy tab. Nice exchanges there. That's going to really be quite nasty. There's more economy there they can focus on. They're still going for that one, which is only. There we go. They need Purple to get are struggling with their economy though, and orange has caught up. Uh, they're gonna. Get, uh, they've just about put enough units to defend against this little onslaught. Although there's not much AA in there, I'm not quite sure what they're doing with those. They're really getting some more undefended metal extractors would be a very good choice, I think, mm. indeed, in this little air force. Purple choosing some unwise confrontations to go in and bomb Galata. Not great. Um, I think Purple at this point need to make a consolidated and combined offensive somewhere because currently they're just sort of here, there and everywhere and they're, they're but that's the beauty of air, that's what air is good for well no, I'm talking about their land I mean air is good for raiding and for being a nuisance It's, but I think it's where the ground is that it's where you're going to pack your punch especially in this game I don't I see air being the game ender in this game I think air is going to be the thing which is the distractor for orange I... I, I... I would like to see, and I expect that we will see, without uh, too much further delay, a decisive move by Purple. They're going to build a big thing which will do the hurty stuff that they need to do. <laughs> the hurty stuff, um, my big words. thing. <laughs> First Angel is out, and it is assisting building... Oh no, it's repairing. Ah, Now that's the thing, the Angels can shoot down projectiles, including anti-air from storms. Ho ho! It really? Are you sure? I believe so. That's why don't we ask them to put that in the test for us? Angels can uh, shoot down projectiles, missiles, and I think the storm weapon comes under that umbrella term. So we we'll have to see. They just need to make sure that those angels are at the front, at the back. Or, or no, that's right, at the back. Yes. <laughs> well, because of course they're quite weak in themselves, aren't they? Yes, they are very. But you see there how they're just shooting down Galata shots. And what they need to do is they need to make sure that the spinners are gone so that they can use themselves against the uh, the storms here. But I think the docks and the defensive forces are going to be able to deal with this. The thing with the Angels and the Air Force here is there aren't too many bombers. Storms are gone. That's it. Yeah. And in go the bombers. And Once you the see there. You just see them just go straight yeah. for the kill. And you see there how the Angel is just shooting down all the projectiles from the spinners. And it just kept that Air Force alive. Oh dear. Only just. Well, it, it wasn't too substantial to begin with, but still, you know. That's still quite hefty. Scouting going on of this little expansion over um, here is just continuing to expand in different places is a good idea. And this you is what saying, I said at the start, which is where you've got very much defined hemispheres. Each side owns a hemisphere, and every time they make an incursion into their opponent's hemisphere, it gets crushed. Yeah. And it's very, very good map for that sort of gameplay. And you need to make these big, decisive pushes to change that. At the moment, Purple are trailing on the economy quite significantly, and they need to really just to remedy that. Mm. Yeah, Orange have actually managed to catch up and uh, consolidate their economy by getting all the T2 in their base and actually expanding out and getting more T2 vehicle factories. So this could be a problem for Purple. The thing um, that Purple haven't done is they haven't... 
you know, got all the T2. They haven't kept up with their expansions. If we compare the expansions of purple and orange, orange have it in terms of the expansion game now. I just checked on the Twitch chat and I've had confirmation from unverified sources that storm projectiles are not included in the angels' protective sphere. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's why they would have the angels in to then take down all the spinner shots. That's it. Spinner shots only. Yes. Now we've got some docks here. They're probably going to put in a few shots on that commander if they're lucky. Not going to do too much damage because, you know, uber cannons are pretty lethal against docks. But a little chip away, never to be sniffed at. Only 2% though. That seems Measly. unreasonably low. <laughs> Well, you never know, they could just back off here. But again, trading with these docks, if they go in range of the Uber Cannon. No, that's it. No, yeah. that's, that was poor poor use of those docks, really. They should have gone all in on that commander initially rather than putting in a measly 2% damage on him. Hmm. That, they could have done a lot more with that. I, th I, I don't, I don't I know think what Purple have here. stopped. Purple, purple have. They, they don't, don't seem stalls. to be doing much. They, they're still, they've got forces around here, there, and everywhere. They have a couple of levelers in various different locations, just sort of say, okay, so we're going to try and push in different directions. But the thing is, if we look in the army tab there, while they have the advantage in terms of numbers, a lot of that Ooh. is docks and... Hello. Oh, dear. There's a little bit of a raid going on there. I just saw a ping from the orange team, which alerted me to that. They've noticed that there's a couple of shutters in there just uh, having a little dig at their tier 2 mechs. Mm. Uh, I don't think they were too happy about that. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Although this turret here is going to put in enough work to stop them, but that's going to just about take out that tier 2. Although the leveler, if he just micros it a little bit better. A little bit better. There we go. I'll do. And then he's going to sit there and plow through what's left. And that's really good work. That's going to really, again, upset the orange team. Yeah. And that's I mean, actually going to do, that's going to put quite a big dent in. If he can finish the job quickly before those ants get there and finish him off. Yeah. Well, no, no, focus your fire. Although that's that he can, he can one hit each and every single one of those. He's actually going to sit there for ages and just... <laughs> oh no, wait, they've got shellers. Mm. And they've also got T2 bots going up now as well, building slammers. Although they are getting raided they're potentially. It's not going to live. I don't think that's going to survive. No, uh, I, I think, I think it they will. got tier 2 in there. Oh, sorry, yeah, they've one. got slammers. No, they they've got slammers. Yeah, okay. Yeah, slammers will defend that. Knock that up pretty easily as long as they're micro against the dogs. One goes down. There's also a T2 vehicle there's fabricator lots, there that's repairing it, so it makes no difference. Yeah. And this is what I was saying about Purple losing out on the ground game here. I think they are getting pushed back. And there's actually a significant force on their doorstep there. There are a bunch of docks, but we've already seen that Leveler's Kiting Docks do okay against them. I'm just waiting to see. That I don't. I, I know Custard, I know Andreas. They're both players which like the old pulling out an unusual surprise that no one's expecting thing. I'm just waiting to see what, what it is. I think there's something we've missed. There must be. Because they wouldn't just be doing this, they would not be playing the attrition game, because that's not how they play. Mm. I think they feel as though they're on the back foot. They have got expansions going on. The thing is, with their raiding parties, that's all they are. But at this stage in the game, raiding is one thing, offensives are another. And I don't think they are actually doing any offensives. I think they are confusing the two, and are trying to offend, be offensive with raiding parties, and it doesn't quite work. Well, this is true. I mean, these two these two mechs should have been dead long. You know, they should have been long gone by now. And that would have been another fifty metal out of the orange economy. But they're still sat there, still intact, and they could easily have been swept away by just a little bit of prodding. Mm. Uh, the storms! The storms! The storms! Ooh, lucky. S lucky or skillful? A combination thereof. I just, I, there's, there's, we're missing something. Marshy, we're missing something. I don't, I don't know what it are. is. I think it's just that odd thing of, if we were playing this, we are definitely missing something, but because we're casters, we can only we can only see what there is unto us. Having a look in the build queues, is there anything that they haven't built yet that they have planned? Not that I see. So just I think it's just a slugging fest at this point. Um, Orange trying to get back into the air game, though, with a lot of air factories queued up, and if they manage to do that, that will completely negate purple in their uh, investment in air.
I'm just, I'm just I'm scanning. I'm scanning for something. I think it lo- it looks like Orange is just building more and more and more more T two factories. Mm. Um, that is going to definitely sense. work for them. Yeah. But I I don't know. I was just expecting. As I said to you earlier, I think it's usually on this map you want a big, single, big, decisive movement that's going to win you the game because it's very very hard to win a war of attrition. With that said, though, this force here has some shellers in it, which can shoot over these mountains and take out these metal extractors. And that's going to put purple down a few pegs as well. Mm. And this is the thing now. Don't forget that before the outset of this game, Andreas was taunting in the lobby saying, you decide one of my maps to play against me in such a decisive game. You make a mistake, my friend. But, but they are on the back foot here, definitely. Uh, to be honest with you, there, there are forces at surrounding them yeah. right now. They are, there are orange forces inching towards their commanders at every opportunity. And uh, are there, many, there are not that many storms really mixed in there. There sh probably should be some more storms, but they tend to be at the back of the forces, which... I don't know, the Purple have this large air force that can't get to involve, because if they do, they will get absolutely obliterated. Hmm... And we can see it there. A couple of fighters just flew overhead and just to test the waters and suddenly saw exploding things appearing in the air. I thought, maybe not. Yes. But I just, I can't see what they can do to counter this. It's just going to be a slow, steady trickle of big, heavy duty units that purple just don't have anything to answer against with. Particularly those levelers, because they pack such a punch over a fairly decent distance. And... You know, they're not weak by any means. When they get, they can sort of tank the shots. That tier 2 factory is going to be not long for this world. And they're just going to slowly work their way through the base. The commander is actually exposed, horribly exposed right now. Too many levelers in that front line. You do not want to let those get too close to you. And there are walls going up, but the walls won't last long. Those will punch straight through those in a very short space of time. But he's holding those units back, being quite conservative with them, hiding behind the wreckage. For what end, I'm not entirely sure. But he's trying to sort of go around and flank the commander, try and beat off any chance of escape. And in the meantime, he's actually taken out a second advanced factory and a sizable force from purple. However, it looks as though the storms have been eradicated, which now means that that air force can finally swoop in and do what it was made to do. Wow. Yes. They need to find a way of finishing off the commanders though, but the commanders are entrenched with flat cannons as defence, but of course the angels can shoot down flak shots, I believe, can they? No, no, no they cannot. No. This it's commander the here, it's the Galata this, that this commander here could be easily taken out by the air force. Mm -hmm. They just need to find him. But they don't know he's there, scouting. Well, they I are just, on the back oh, foot. So. They are so on the back foot, it's unreal, they shouldn't be, they've got they should not be on the back foot right now, but they are. I'm just trying to find a way out for them with my own mind. I just can't see it because they are surrounded and they have got the wrong unit force. But Orange, actually at the moment, not pushing in too hard on any one front. They're just sort of scouting, taunting, teasing, not playing it with any risks. Hmm. Purple pinged that force, so obviously they're aware that is something which needs dealing with. There are storms in the mix, so they know that they can't do it with air. So what are they going to do? They've got boombots. They They've got boombots. Yeah, um, I don't think boombots are the right thing to deal with this. I think they are. Levelers? Yeah, a levelers can only fire off... They need a lot of boombots. They need oh, a that, lot of boombots. that air force is going to have a bad day. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why they flew those fighters over the top of their base. I think they're they wanted to, to scout. Are they trying to kite them? It might be scouting. Yes, yeah, scouting is probably a good idea, actually. Mm. But I don't know. They just don't have anything really for this. They've got slammers at the door, levelers as well. Boombots have just gone in there to try and deal with the storms. I think they've gone in. Have they? Have they kill off all the storms? No, There's one, one left alive, and one's all it takes. But they're going oh, for it. Anyway. They're going no. for it. Oh, that's absolutely brutal. That's taken out the majority of their air force. Oh dear. <laughs> and I think we'll see the GG's called soon. Because they're now chewing through T2 power, T2 factories. Yeah. And look at the economies right now. Yeah. It's double. It's small. Well, yeah, it is double. And it's going to keep going. Although I said those Kestrels in there are going to finish picking up those units. But there's another wave coming in on another front. 
and it's just constant in bombard destroy do it again and rinse and repeat and i can't see that purple have got anything on the way that's going to change that pattern mm. they have got andreas <laughs> blaming He's lag just out okay Andreas, Andreas blaming lag for the fact that he's lost on his own map. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh dear. Well, is that a is that a is that a GG? indicator of concession? Is that a GG? It seems it. Although he's not actually said the letters, so maybe he's just disconnecting so the customer can finish by himself. I don't know. I think if if Custard and Andreas lose this, which system do you think they will choose? Um, Fortress. I think they'll go for the Fortress just because of how decisively they won it last time. And again, they will also be aware of the fact that this team did not see them playing on Fortress last time. They won't be expecting it. Boombots are going to go in there, try and. There's enough docks in there that those Boombots just can't quite do the work that they need to do. Mm. There's anti nukes going up in the orange base. They're, they're worried that that purple are going for nukes but they're not purple just can't do anything they're entrenched but they, they just they, I, it's very difficult to know as a player when you have the upper hand or when yeah. you're when you're on the back foot it's very easy to know and when you're doing okay you still sometimes feel like you're on the back foot it's very difficult to assert that you have an advantage is that a Hulkins I see that's a Hulkins I see that's another second Hulkins going up right here mm, yeah I see it I'm just it's just going to be a war of attrition and they're getting eaten away every single edge of their base just being hammered away slowly utterly utterly demoralizing for the purple team hmm. so what do you think of that T2 air start then um not good <laughs> no not so good I don't it think it worked for them I think it was more a case of using the T2 air to what can it give you? Extent, so apart from, they, apart they, from the worms, what does it give you? The ability to have the mobile Kestrel raiding, but the thing is, they had the raiding in that, wow, their, their air force is just... It's gone. They have no more air. Uh, so again, uh, storms. As, as soon as uh, the Orange team realised they'd gone T2 air, the first thing they did was they built that vehicle factory, pumped out the storms, and you know what? That has single-handedly nullified every single attempt that the purple team has made to get back into the game. Mm. Quite sad, really. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, again, it's always nice when you see strategies that are just different, outside the box. The thing with T2 Air is that it just doesn't have the flexibility that vehicles, naval, or bots have. And there's the GG from Andreas. I no, would imagine is. that's rather reluctant tail between legs. So. That's it. But we'll go into a third game in this best of three. Well, this is it. We're, we're, of course it would be a third game in the best of three. Why would we expect any different? Well, <laughs> you never know. There they go. there's the completes. GG's. GG's. I have to say, absolutely solid play from mm. our uh, resident pies of the people.